So Cadden Court is giving customers access to industrial process that otherwise they wouldn't have access to. It covers such a wide variety of uh, possibilities in a simple or as complex form as that might take. I like the variety of getting out there, meeting customers, problem solving, even when it's going wrong, it's, it's quite rewarding. And agriculture, there's just so many opportunities. Problem solving is, is just, it's agriculture through and through. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along once again to a very special profile piece. This time we're out again with uh, Mr. James Hudson. He's no stranger to you guys. We've done lots with him, looking at some of his various uh, bespoke projects and builds and things like that. But this time we're checking out his uh, Cad and Cut business, which is part of the, the bigger business, which is uh, your uh, J.F. Hudson business. So, I mean, Cad and Cut, for a start of, where does it sort of fit within the J.F. Hudson business? So it, it covers quite a bit of what we do and it sort of works with my engineering background and want to solve problems. So a lot of the videos we've done in the past has come from a problem solving background. So the waders, there's a problem there, can we find a machine to solve that problem? The compact front boxes, that's a solution to a problem. And that's basically what this is, mm. um, right from the simplest form, which is basically a laser cut piece of steel like, like this. Yeah. This is a, basically a piece of steel that goes on the bottom of a bolt for a bolt box for bolting stanchions to the concrete. The reason that's simple is because it's just laser cut. We supply them to a customer to save him the time of cutting and punching and it means that he can get on with other jobs. It's, it's very simple. Yeah. Uh, this is a part rail fence post, and the same with that. It's basically, it's a job that could be done with a metal worker, but actually, from, from the customer's point of view, it's better for them to do other things and get a product like that laser cut, and then they'll do the processing like galvanizing and all the other bits that go with it, and it'll save them quite a bit of time of, for various reasons. Then we sort of move on to the hard to find or the uh, obsolete parts. So an example of that is the, um, the, the trough surrounds, the, the stainless steel trough surrounds that we make for the Delaval HB50 parlours. Um, that came out of a customer that I was working for at the time who's had galvanised ones that had been in from the parlour being installed and they'd rotted away. So how do we replace them in such a way that they're not going to rot away? So they're, a, they're a, a sort of a product that we've ended up adding to our range. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes a project that we'll do for somebody then becomes a, a product that we then sell. From the sort of obsolete, they then go on to assemblies, which are like m slightly more complex, like this here. This is a tool for changing liners on a Delaval robot milking machine, mm. VMS. And that was a, a customer came and said, look, this... This is a challenge. This we're finding this hard to do. Can you can you um, come up with an idea? So that's where this comes from. And this is a this is an example of a product that we've then taken on, made one. It did its job. So then taking it on, and now it's available to buy off the website. There's a laser cover there for a Lely robot. That's a product that we make for a customer, and he then sells it. Right. Same as the the calf prams. Um, we we basically make them, and then supply them to. A to our customer who then supplies them to the farmers. So we, we sort of go from the assemblage to the even more complex, which is the things like the, the silo crab, mm. which is, again, that's a problem that needed solving. And off the back of that, we've ended up with a product that would help other yeah. farmers. For things like, well, everything here, I use SolidWorks. It gives me the ability to draw something, whatever it might be, and s send a video of it to the customer through SolidWorks, we can rotate it in such a way that you can look at all the different sides of it. You can properly visualise it. it before exactly, you, know, yeah. you can start making prototypes. And I can share things. that video and then the customer can say, yes, but I want this altering or yes, but or no, you've got it wrong. And you, before you've even cut any steel, you can have half a chance of knowing that you're right or wrong. Yeah. It means that we can be as efficient as possible with materials. We can put material where we need it and, and save it where we don't need it. And when some ideas are presented to you, obviously you come up with some ideas yourself, you identify some problems, but those problems that have come to you by other people, what sort of state are those ideas in? Are they sketched out or is it literally just a challenge? 
you figure it out or is it just all does it vary a bit it varies massively yeah yeah definitely like some 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 will get like a coloured in drawing yeah which is grand and some it's like i've had this idea and we basically talk about it and i try and interpret what they're saying and normally i can get quite close i can get to pretty much but then equally sometimes you end up with a few alterations but that's where solid works plays for itself yeah because you can basically say right is that what you're thinking and they could say no and you haven't cut any steel you haven't wasted any material you've just just taken a bit of time yeah, taking a bit of time yeah. yeah so once you've done your solid works stuff what's after what comes next after that so most of the time it's either produce a load of drawings out of solid works and sometimes that'll be all the customer wants but then it can be as much as right drawings are right yes go and make it uh, and we'll make we'll make one or we'll make as many as required, and then af sometimes it then leads on to more work in a sort of product development. So we've done the design, we've done the 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 sort of the computer bit, mm. but then the actual like making a prototype, putting it together, uh, assembly, uh, that it, that that's the sort of the most complex version of CAD and Cut, which is basically from design. From well, concept design to manufacture, yeah. assembly, prototype, the whole job, and that's that's pretty much what we did for Hoof Count. We helped design and build two prototypes of the Hoof Count Transit, right. which is their um, dry cow management uh, system, which weighs and foot baths the cows when they're dry, so that when they go into the herd, they're in as good a condition as possible. And it was. It was a, a foot bath weighing, but also an outer path feeder. So it combined as many things yeah. as possible. One project I did was a, drew the steel work of a milking parlour and then produced the drawing so that the customer could go away and effectively produce that milking parlour themselves. And that, that ended up with 115 different drawings of the different parts that then made up the sub-assemblies that then made up the whole assembly. Mm. And um, so, yeah, that was... A reasonable size project. Sounds like it. So the can cut business then, or the can cut side of the business, would you say that's something you're very passionate about without sounding too soppy? Because <laughs> yeah. you've got loads of elements to Jay Hudson, the bigger picture company, yeah. but this problem solving side of it. Yeah, it's certainly, the, the business we have has sort of evolved over the last seven, eight years. Um, and in some respects, we've ended up doing a, such a wide variety of different projects. It just, some of the things we've ended up doing, I don't, it's one of them situations where you'd, you'd never, if you set off to say, right, we'll end up doing that. Well, example is building a silo club. Yeah. Never in a million years would I have foreseen that in 2014, <laughs> but it was an opportunity. And so as a business, because when I say we, it's me and Lindsay yeah. and help from other people who aren't to be forgotten about <laughs> exactly <laughs> she's not gonna let you either know, <laughs> well like there's rach there's Nige, there's my brother there's there's other people in the background and i do sometimes think i'm guilty of saying we when really it shouldn't be me mm. because i do think it's maybe making it sound grander than it is but the reality is there is more to it than just me and Lindsay. yeah um yeah the business we've ended up with is is just by its nature been quite a diverse business mm. from a from a small business point of view uh, we're in a position where we can react faster mm. than big business um so if someone rings up and says i've had an idea come and see us i can i can go and see them and i can look at it and say yes and equally if someone rings up and says what do you think to this idea or can you do this it's a yes or it's a no and if it's no normally it's a no but i think i know who can yeah. Um, because I am conscious that you don't want to take on everything, but it's hard to not say yes as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try and help everybody, but you know you can't. So yeah, sometimes it. it's a no, but I think I know who can help you. From a manufacturing point of view, there's processes coming now that weren't as available as they are now. An example of that is 3D printing. Yeah, I was just going to say, looking at that down there. <laughs> yeah, the 3D printing is a fascinating process. Um, so we, this is a this is a part that we produce for the calf prams, and basically it's two 3D printed parts that that go together to create a, a hinge. Mm. And those there's four, there's 
four of them parts, replacing four steel parts, which then made it a lot easier to manufacture. And so that's, a, that's an example of, of how I can use 3D printing to solve a problem. Yeah. Um, in, in the liner changer, there's these, these, are, these are some parts that were 3D printed to basically go from a round tube to a, to a square. Um, they're relatively cheap to produce and pretty quick and easy. Yeah, and there'll um, be little to no waste with 3D printing because no. you're not cutting anything. No. It's printed in the shape you wanted it. Yeah, and equally you can be quite resourceful with it because it, doesn't, it isn't necessarily solid. You can alter how dense it is, mm. how much fill there is within that part. So that, uh, you can that have part. cavities within a... Yeah, you basically tell it how much fill you want, whether you want 10%, 90% or 100% fill, and it'll just work out and basically lattice inside. So you don't see it on the outside, but if you cut into it, you would see the lattice that has mm. then gone to make up that that um, right. that part. And that this is an example. This is a basically a cup holder for a tractor that I got quite frustrated one day. <laughs> I just got so mad with <laughs> the cup holders in, in one tractor. So I thought, right, solving that problem. And uh, so that basically drops into the tractor. So now... So that can, drops into a cup holder, that, which is that, just far too big. Yeah, and right. basically your can or your cup just baggles about and falls out and you know your drinks everywhere so that basically drops in and then my can and drink yeah. won't go anywhere you made a bush basically no well, basically yeah 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 <laughs> but yeah. with some fancy slots so you yeah, can yeah. put your mobile phone in as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so as yeah. well as little components like that uh hinges and things like that what other things does 3d printing suit is it great for prototypes and things like oh, that massively yeah yeah um, and it's quite a good way of prototyping because, like I said, you can alter the amount of fill. So you can basically make, so you could print something as a shell, knowing you wanted it full, prove it works, and then just print the next one as 100% fill. Mm. So, yeah, from a prototyping point of view, this is where sort of in, this, this is a sort of process that I can make use of. Unlike laser cutting steel, it, it's a relatively affor it's affordable solution which then means I've got the ability to solve problems quite quickly. Yeah. And that's how I could justify spending money on a 3D printer. Um, and in fairness, with things like the, the, calf, the, the parts that is made for the calf pram, um, it paid for itself straight away. Yeah. So obviously we've discussed uh, a lot about the, you know, your cabin and cut projects within AG. Is there anything outside of AG you do at all? Yeah, I mean, we've ended up doing all sorts of completely random, <laughs> random jobs. And back to what I said about, like, as a small business, if someone rings up, it's a case of a yes or a no, and you can you can sign yourself up to something that you think, what have we just done? Yeah. But um, yeah, there's a, with the coronavirus, we've ended up um, sorting out uh, coronavirus post boxes, which are post boxes for the sample tests. Mm. And they've been going all over the country. That's for a, a multinational, uh, laboratory company and uh, so yeah that was that was a random job how did you even get involved in that <laughs> uh, because the chap who's managing director lives in the village right and he rang up and said <laughs> think you do this I was, yeah I think so not what you know is it <laughs> no 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 it isn't no. Um, and then that's like just some of the stuff I end up doing is just random yeah but it's just having the ability to say yes when someone wants an answer yeah Um so yeah, it's certainly, that's probably, that's one of the most random. Just following on from that, what would you say, I mean, what's been one of your most enjoyable projects to work <laughs> on? Yeah, one, one of the most uh, rewarding was a project, was to make a trophy for a, a new um, class at Wednesdale show for the modern tractors. It was in, in memory of a, of a local lad who, who passed away far too young. And it was one of those situations where you got a phone call to say, can you do this? And uh, immediately the answer is yes. But then afterwards you put the phone on and I think, I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's where in fairness SolidWorks did its trick because I set off with an idea, started drawing it, and then sort of through the process of drawing it, you realise actually it makes sense for this, it becomes 3D because of what the way you you, you're drawing it and the way you've designed it. Yeah. And, and sort of solutions present themselves. You think, why don't I think of that? But that's the, that's the beauty of using SideWorks, that solutions that sort of appear. And um, so, yeah, that was certainly 
it was most rewarding. I think mm. is the uh, it was it's certainly one of those that I thought, what have I done here? But yeah, yeah done a good job. I'm pleased with that. It, uh, so yeah. And I suppose uh, just to just to wrap up uh, and finally uh, yeah. sum up, Cadden Cut. So Cadden Cut is um, giving customers access to industrial process that otherwise they wouldn't have access to. So. 3D printing, laser cutting, plasma cutting, and, and producing a, a solution to problems in a simple or as complex form as that might take. It covers, and that's some of the challenge really, it covers such a wide variety of uh, possibilities. It's sort of hard to, to sort of explain in a way that people might be able to think, ah, oh, I know, I can make use of that. Mm. It's, there's, there's a fair amount of opportunity out there. That's it. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, as ever, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I'm sure we've got more, to, more in the pipeline and more to come from you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. I certainly have. Uh, as ever, go check out all of our other videos and go and check out uh, Jeff Olson's uh, website as well for more details on the old uh, cabin cut side of the business and all of its other various uh, aspects to its business. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching and we'll catch you again next time.